Good morning. Good morning, saints. We praise the Lord God. Thank you for your presence this morning in the house of God for those who are present. And for those who are online, thank you for joining us through this remote channel. We want to give God thanks for another week. Amen. God has been good no matter what the circumstances of life present to us. And so I would like to greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thank God for your spirit life. For those who are watching through the channel, if you're watching for the first time, you are tuned in to the Church of God's Sabbath Keeping. We are located at 312 Rexdale Boulevard in Toronto, Ontario, and that's in Canada. My name is Howard Green. I'll be your moderator for this morning. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our host pastor, Pastor Maurice Blagrove, and his family, all the ministers of the gospel that serve in this congregation, and all the saints with us. We want to greet you in Jesus' name. We are going to commence our service uh, at this time. And so, to do so, we are going to be singing our, op singing our opening hymn, which is hymn number 226. It is entitled, Send the Light. And this time, we want to ask everybody in the audience, please, to listen to the organist play the introduction. And then we will have the a song will be sung to us by Sister Abigail Lawrence. <laughs> Call come ring in all the restless way. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. Macedonian call today, send the light, send the light, and a golden offering at the cross we lay, send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Christ-like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. For a crown of love, send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore, send the
us pray. It is of the Lord's mercies why we are not consumed. His mercies is renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Our Father and our God who is in heaven, hallowed be your holy, righteous, eternal name. Another time we, your children, we humble ourselves in your presence. And we join with the writer that said, safely through another week, God has brought us on our way. Let us now a blessing seek, waiting in his courts today. Truly, it is day of all the week the best. It's an emblem of eternal rest. Father, we thank you for this day that you have hallowed and set apart from all the rest that we can come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. Teach us, Lord, what it means to worship you in spirit and in truth, because we know that is what you seek. That is what you are worthy of. Father, as we gather together, we're asking that you remember the service. You see the outline, dear Lord. We present our teacher before you at this time. Mighty God, one that you have anointed, that you have blessed, that you have called. We pray that you'll continue to inspire him, Lord, that as he speaks, it will not be of self, but everything will be inspired by you. And Father, for us, the students, Lord, what can I say? We hear your word week after week. But we know, Father, that it's not the hearers of your word, but the doers of your word. So we're asking you, Father, do something to our hearts today. We're asking, dear Lord, that we will take something from your word and practice it in our everyday life. Cultivate the heart, our heart, the, the ground of our hearts, we pray, dear Lord, that we will receive your words and do them. Every song, every scripture, let everything be done to your glory and to your honor. We give you thanks for this opportunity because we recognize, God, it is an opportunity every time that we have to call upon your name, to come into your house. It is a privilege and it is an honor. We did not call ourselves, Lord, but you called us. And we thank you. We are grateful for this opportunity. So now be with us, we pray. As we give you thanks, we give you praise, we adore your name. In Jesus' precious name, we tell you thanks. Amen. This week's scripture is taken from Acts 16, verses 11 to 30. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside, where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake to the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned again and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas, and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers, and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into the prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, but supposing the prisoners had been fled. 
But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord God. I want to take this opportunity to thank God for everybody that's here this morning. And thank God for your spirit lives, church. Because if we were not alive and had the privilege to be here today, we, for the dead praise not God. The scripture says there is no remembrance of God in the grave. And so when we are alive, when we are alive, am I speaking with the church today? Like literally, when you are alive and you have energy and strength and capability to praise God, <laughs> anyways, Maybe I'm the only one with that kind of fire. I, I can't believe that, but man, I feel good about God. Amen. And so we are grateful. I want to thank God for how he has led the service this morning, acknowledging Sister uh, Abigail Lawrence, who sung the song, and the prayer by Sister Trisha Brown. And of course, uh, thanking God for Sister Shailen and Anastasio that read the scripture. At this time, we're going to be entering into our Bible study. This is a part of the service where you know, you have the privilege to be taught the Word of God, and the opportunity would be presented for those who are part of the audience. There will be a microphone placed at the front, and you will have the opportunity, if you'd like to make a comment or ask a question, you can just come and stand by the microphone. The teacher will see you and will acknowledge you, and you will be able to speak. Um, those who are online, obviously, um, you would have to post your questions or comments in the chat. Uh, we ask that you put a put question before, so that way we know it's a question and not a statement. And um, we do encourage as well that you know if you're going to post something in the chat, uh, be mindful that you know this uh, is a universal experience for a lot of people from different backgrounds. And so my encouragement, as always, is ensure that whatever you write, it's something that is wholesome and that will enhance uh, individuals. Amen? And so at this time, I'd like to introduce our teacher for this morning. It's going to be Teacher Ricardo Rose. And on the uh, series that he's teaching for the past few weeks, uh, this morning, he will be speaking to us about being in the river. So please receive our teacher in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pleasant good morning to one and all. Shall we praise the Lord in the house? Can we lift up a praise to our God and our King this morning? I'm very thankful and happy to be with you all again this blessed Sabbath day. I want to welcome everyone, both in the house and online, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to give thanks and praise to our God for carrying us safely through another week. I want to echo the words of our dear Pastor Green and say, I am taking the opportunity this morning to thank God for another day. We heard, or we should have all heard by now, of the passing of our dear Pastor Parr, our former host pastor of many years, um, one whom I grew up under from a young boy until now, and um, 
You know, obviously we do share our condolences with the Parr family as an extension of our spiritual family here in Canada. But it gave me reason to rejoice that I'm still alive, that I'm still able to say something, to see something, to hear something, to touch something. I'm still alive. And I'm thankful that we have this platform I'm thankful that we have this local body. I'm thankful that we have this opportunity to be together again. If you agree, please say amen. amen. I want to bring greetings to uh, my pastor, Pastor Green, as well as Pastor Blagrove and Pastor Mark, Pastor Anastasio, and all the other ministers of the gospel and their families. Uh, to the holy saints of Christ, I greet you as well. And to any online first-time guests, I want to especially welcome you and thank you for taking the time to be with us. For the sake of those who might be joining us for the first time, um, it is customary of me to provide a brief synopsis of where we are at in terms of our learning path and where we will be going in the next couple weeks. Um, we do have today's lesson plus two more um, before we conclude the series with a, a review at the end. Just as a reminder, I will not be present for next week's lesson. Pastor Mark will be filling in for me. Um, but I will return, God willing, the week after um, for lesson number 13. And then Pastor Mark and I will come back together again to do a series review, as I said earlier. I do also want to encourage you, if you are online, or even if you're here with us this morning, just take a moment to share the link to this local service with somebody, if you have the opportunity. Um, there have been many times where um, people have even reached out to me just in thankfulness, because they got a chance to hear the word on the Sabbath morning. And I, I'm, I'm encouraged by the fact that there are many people who actually do appreciate the services that we provide here. So I'm thanking the Lord that we have this opportunity to even just share the link and provide people with a learning experience. I will lecture first, and then, um, because there's quite a bit to unpack in this text, or in this series of texts. However, I will take questions from both those of you who are here in person, um, and I will take questions from the online chat near the end of the lesson. I'm going to read a series of scriptures, some of which have already been read, but I actually will uh, focus more on the context that leads up to the events of today's lesson, because that is important, um, but especially in today's lesson. And I will ask questions throughout, and I encourage all to participate. So with that being said, um, let's do a quick recap. Let's do a quick recap. Oh, maybe before I forget, tomorrow is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, wives, etc. Thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. And I hope your husbands and your sons and all your children treat you very nicely tomorrow. Um, please, if you can remember anything from what we discussed last Sabbath, can you just share, even you can just shout it out loud. Does anybody remember anything we discussed uh, last Sabbath? Feel free to just shout out anything that comes to mind. Anything at all. It seems past degree, and I might need to start assigning homework. It's okay. Let me just help you then. And, and, and I do want to stress that it's important for us to know that these lessons build upon each other. So it's, if, if, we, if we see that we're sometimes struggling to remember what it is, it's probably important we take some notes so that we can remember some of the things that we learned because every lesson builds upon the previous one, okay? So last week's lesson was the 10th lesson of the series. It was entitled In the Word, and we were in the book of Acts, of course, but in chapter 13. And we found ourselves examining the events of Paul's first missionary trip. He and Barnabas were together with the brethren in Antioch. And during a time of fasting and prayer, we found that the Holy Spirit 
called Barnabas and, and Saul, who later becomes Paul, out for a special work. You can read about this in Acts 13, chapter, uh, Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. But they departed and began immediately spreading the good news of Jesus Christ in the various places that they traveled to. And I thought it was very important that we mentioned that the Holy Spirit is the one who commissioned them. They didn't pick themselves up to go and do God's work. God called them and he commissioned them to go do it. But there were some great discussions that we had last week by some of the brethren um, who came and spoke about how they also had a desire to go and God moved upon their hearts and they went and did the work. So there is a there is a symbiotic relationship between desire and the call. And I'm, and I'm glad to know that um, Paul, Paul, uh, Barnabas and Saul were obedient. But the good thing is that they went out and immediately began doing the work. But as soon as they started doing the work, they also came against opposition. They immediately faced, they immediately faced opposition in the form of spiritual darkness and immorality and there was great opposition to the sharing of the word. But still they were not deterred. They openly preached Christ in the synagogues. They reasoned with the Gentiles that Jesus was the Christ and the Messiah. And even at one point they had an opportunity to declare the good news to a Roman politician who actually wanted to hear what they had to say. But once again, wherever the word is, there's going to be opposition and resistance. And we saw that the enemy planted a wicked sorcerer to oppose the word of God, but the word of God prevailed. Amen. We, see, we saw clearly last week that God's ultimate plan is that all men would be saved, and in our daily lives, in doing the work of the kingdom, believers need to be grounded in the word. I know that it's, uh, I know it's like cliche, like in church we hear a lot of things like, oh, you need to pray, you need to read your Bible, you need to this, you need to that, etc., etc., etc. But there's a reason why we need to be spiritually grounded, because it's very easy to also be swayed by every wind of doctrine. There are a lot of opportunities that are present in the world today that can easily draw us away if we are not intently focused on what the Word of God teaches. So we saw that the faithful church, the faithful early church was one that was grounded in the word and attuned to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We're going to see some instances of why that's important in today's lesson as well. But I want us to know that the example that Barnabas and Saul showed us was that we can live a life submitted to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not just for some or for the super spiritual. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is available to all those who believe. And he is commissioning us. And if our desire and if our intention is to not only serve God, but to do the work that God has created us for, he will commission us to do it. Can the church say amen? So I want to enable us to operate fully in the authority of the Holy Spirit because we saw very clearly in last week's lesson that when you're in the Word, the Holy Spirit has something to work with, the Holy Spirit has something to move upon, and by faith we saw very clearly that the apostles operated in their call and were influential to the environments around them. Finally, it's crucial, and I believe this point was also made as well, it's crucial that believers spend time in prayer and fasting, we need to hear God clearly. We need to hear God clearly. I don't know about you, but sometimes I can feel when I'm getting dull. Am I the only one? Come on, is, am I the only one? Maybe I'm the only one, Pastor Green. But I, I, I can feel when I'm getting dull in the spirit. I can, I can feel I can sense, I can discern when I'm not really in line with what God is saying. And you know, normally you will start seeing it by some of the decisions you make, by some of, some of your fleshly appetites taking more control over you. And all of a sudden you stop praying in the morning. All of a sudden, the word of God doesn't seem to have the preeminence or the superiority that it once had 
when you first believed. I want to remind the church this morning of the importance of prayer, fasting, and reading the scriptures. It might be boring sometimes, you might not feel like doing it, but there's a reason we invest. We need to be in line with God. Because if God's gonna use us in any capacity, whether at work, at school, in public, in church, it doesn't matter, we need to know what he's saying. So don't ever think for a moment that the minister can come up here and just tell you whatever he feels. He doesn't even have the authority to do that. I have to speak what the Holy Spirit gives me. The preacher, the teacher, any minister in any capacity has to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, he'll just give you his favorite topics and you'll just think that, oh, this is what God's saying. And that may not even be what God's saying. It may just be his opinion. But this one thing I'm confident of, if we are in the word, we will hear God. So we should, be remain, we should remain faithful and be consistent and also supportive of one another in our spiritual journey. We need to also be a people who are supportive of one another in our spiritual journeys. Nobody in this building is an island unto themselves. We are part of a body made up of a collection of people from different backgrounds, different experiences, different walks of life. And this is God's design that all flesh might be saved and might be part of his family. So we need to support one another because sometimes I don't know what you're going through. And this is maybe another reason why we should also encourage testimonies because testimonies are powerful. Because sometimes I just need to hear how you overcame so I can get through to Tuesday. Am I the only one who needs to sometimes hear that God can carry me through? I know, I know how easy it is for us to get distracted. I understand how challenging life can get and sometimes you're not thinking about the scriptures you read. Sometimes you're not, you, sometimes so much is going on you can't even hear or remember what the preacher said last Sabbath. But sometimes it just takes the reminding, the reminder that comes by a testimony that I heard from the week. Last week I was actually encouraged, Pastor Green, um, by Marissa's testimony. Because I was just reminded that God is a keeper. Like if there's anything that I remember from last week, it was that God is a keeper. And that even when I'm not looking for trouble, the enemy's after me, but God will keep me. So let's be, let's be faithful and supportive of one another in our journeys and, and keep each other in prayer. Let's get into today's lesson. So today's lesson, we will be reviewing the events of Acts chapter 16. And we're going to join the Apostle Paul and his companions as they embark on their second missionary journey. Now, there's some interesting dynamics we will see throughout this text, and I want to encourage each of us to pay attention carefully because there's some interesting things, like I said, that happen. But despite Paul's desire to share the gospel across the Roman province of Asia Minor, which in today's uh, geography is referring to an area of Turkey, the Holy Spirit actually gave Paul directions not to go there, which I thought was very interesting. Usually when people want to do a good work and they want to go share the gospel and like these are things that like, like Christians should be doing. Like, we sh like why would the Holy Spirit say no to Paul's desire to share the gospel? It's just very interesting to me, but we will uncover and unpack some of that today because there is a good reason. Furthermore, we will see that Paul and his company will eventually end up in Philippi, a leading city in the district of Macedonia, which was also a Roman colony. Now I know for some of us, some of these details may not mean that much. You know, maybe if you didn't take geography in school, I, I studied geography, so I find geography fascinating. But, Maybe for some of us, maybe some of these details don't matter, but they very much matter. They very much matter. And we will see very clearly that 
the Holy Spirit had a reason for Paul not to go to Asia because the people in Macedonia needed to hear the gospel. And if he didn't get that directive, he wouldn't have gone there. We'll see that the church was gathered by the riverside outside the city gates for prayer. It's the lesson topic is entitled In the River. But we will see that there was an opportunity for the word of God to be shared in a place where probably people didn't expect or people didn't know that God was coming to. Normally when you hear people saying on the weekend, hey, I'm going to church, what comes to mind? They're probably going to a building. They're probably going to go meet people. They're probably going to see other people who share their faith. But in this text, we see Paul and his company going to the riverside for service. I'm just trying to use everyday language. But God was intentional because there were souls to be saved for the kingdom. Acts chapter 16 can be broken down into six sections for better understanding. We'll be focusing on the first three, but I'll give you all six up front. Firstly, we'll be examining Timothy and Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16, verses 1 through 5. We'll be looking at Timothy, Paul, and Silas. Section number two is Paul's call to Macedonia, verses 6 to 10. Uh, we'll be looking at the conversion of Lydia in verses 11 to 15. So those are the first three sections, and that's what we will be focusing on in today's lesson. However, there are some other fascinating details if you continue reading after those sections. What, and actually, this is one of my favorite sections of Scripture. It's unfortunate we won't be looking at it in detail, but I encourage you to go and read about Paul and Silas in prison. It's a well-known story in the church, but one I would encourage you, if you're not familiar, you can read about it in Acts chapter 16 onwards to verse 40. We're gonna, you will find that there was also a miraculous conversion of the Philippian jailer who was keeping them, uh, them being Paul and Silas, and then also their miraculous release from prison. So once again, we're going to look at those first three sections. I do want to encourage, if you have any questions, thoughts, or comments, please, you don't even have to wait. Just approach the mic. I will acknowledge you, and I'll give you time. So please don't be shy. But let me give you some context. Let me provide you with some context, because I think that's important. How did we get to Act 16? Okay? How did we get to Act 16? So as I said earlier, Acts 16, or maybe I didn't say this, but I'm going to say this part now. Acts 16 describes the second segment of Paul and Silas's missionary journey. So where we discussed last week in Acts 13, which was Paul's um, first missionary journey, thank you, sir. Paul's, we're looking now at the second. So there's a lot of time that has expanded between Acts 13, where we were last week, and Acts 16, where we were this week. We obviously can't go through everything in detail, so I'll have to give you the crash course of what happened in between. But we remember, we're in Acts 13, Paul and Barnabas, or sorry, Saul and Barnabas were with the brethren in Antioch. Syrian Antioch, for those who are the Bible scholars, because there's a difference. Antioch is, a, is an area that had multiple names split up across the region. And the Holy Spirit sent them out, and they went and did their work. Some biblical scholars estimate between Acts 13 and Acts 16 is about a five-year period. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up as a kid reading the Bible, sometimes you think, when you read through the chapters, you think like, okay, this happened, and the next day was chapter 2, and then the next day was chapter 3. Sometimes, Pastor Green, there's years of time that pass between verses, let alone chapters. So I want us to understand that Paul's journey happened over a period of time. It wasn't like things just happened day after after day. There's a lot of things that happened in between. But the reason why I say that is because so much took place between Acts 13 and Acts 16 that for us to even understand the significance of today's text, we need to see what happened in between. Good morning, Pastor Mark. So let's quickly go through Acts 14. Acts 14, we see Paul and Barnabas continued in the work and they headed to Iconium. 
And similar to the experience they had in Pisidian Antioch, many Jews and Greeks came to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ from their preaching, but there was also many who were, were not convinced. And once again, whenever there is the word of God being shared, there's always going to be opposition. And we see that even though they were doing the work of Christ and many came to believe, there was also many who didn't. And as it was stated last week, we should also be cognizant of the fact that even though the preacher may preach the best message in the world and it makes sense and so many people respond, there's always going to be people who just choose to resist the word of God. And that's just a reality. God understands that. We should also as well. But not only did people resist it, but we also saw that they were also being labeled as false teachers, implying that there were other faith groups that were present, namely the Jews, who did not accept that Yeshua was the Messiah. So now Paul and, si Paul and Barnabas, rather, had the difficult task of having to preach and to share the good news in a group of people who have now been turned hostile against them. Furthermore, if it wasn't hard enough that they had to preach in an environment that was hostile against them, their lives were being threatened because the Jews had stirred up the people and the rulers to threaten them with stoning. So talk about hardship. When God's called you to a work, you're doing it, and your life is now in danger. So when they hear about the plan, they flee from that area to go to a place called Lystra, which will also be important for today. When they're in Lystra, once again, we're still in Acts chapter 14, Paul heals a man who was born lame, and the people, in response, because they were very, uh, it was a very pagan uh, environment, and they worshiped like Greek gods and stuff like that, so they called Barnabas Zeus, which is the Greek, uh, in Greek mythology is like their version of the supreme God. And Paul, because he was the person who was doing most of the speaking, they called him Hermes. And the people were trying to worship them because they had, saw, they had seen a miraculous act that they had said, well, the only way this could have happened was by the power of Zeus. And Paul and Barnabas, naturally, because they recognized that they are not worthy of worship, began to tell the people, look, do not worship us. We are just men with a message. And they tried their best, but the people would not relent. And unfortunately, in all of this calamity and mess that's happening, the, the Jewish leaders that were from the areas that, were, uh, that Paul and Barnabas had been in before, in Pisidian Antioch and in, in an Iconium, they now arrive in Lystra to cause up more trouble for Paul and Barnabas. And on top of that, they incite the crowd to once again stone them. And this time it actually happens and Paul and Barnabas are nearly stoned to death. Miraculously, they survive. But why am I saying this to us this morning? Because I think some of us may not know this, but let me just remind you. Trouble and persecution will follow those who follow Christ. Can I say that again? Persecution, hardship, heartache, trials, tribulation, these things will follow those who pursue righteousness. But rest assured, my brethren, be encouraged, my friends. God is faithful to keep us. Amen? Even when they were faced with death, they were still faithful to the sharing of the word of God. They were still faithful to tell people about Jesus Christ, even when they were faced with death. Now, there's a lot of things that, if I'm going to die for it, it, it better count. There's a lot of things that people choose to die for. But these men were so convinced and so persuaded in their faith that even when they were faced with death, they were willing to go forward. And you know what the amazing thing is? We'll see later on that Paul leaves and goes back to these cities to declare the good news of Jesus. 
This is the amazing thing about being persuaded in our faith. Even when you are faced with this difficulty, if you are fully persuaded, if you are fully convinced, you will even go back and combat the darkness. That's the kind of boldness that the Holy Spirit gives in conjunction with your faith. So yes, your friends might reject you. Yes, your family members might ridicule you. Yes, people may not understand why is it that you hold on to this Jesus so much. But I want to encourage somebody this morning. Hold on. God is faithful. He will keep you. But we also have to be faithful to the work. We have to be faithful to the work because there is darkness that needs to know that there is light. They don't understand. If they understand, Paul says, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. So we know that they clearly do not realize that they're fighting against God, which is an unwinnable battle. They incite the crowd, they stone them, they drag them out the city, they leave them for dead, but God miraculously keeps Paul and Barnabas, and then they travel onwards east to Derby. Once again, another place that'll be important for today's lesson. In Derby, Paul and Barnabas make more disciples. You would think that after so much hardship and so much labeling and so much difficulty, that they would probably be they would probably be discouraged, probably be like, you know what, this is this too much. But no, they go even further and they make more disciples. They didn't relent on their responsibilities as the ones who have been given the gospel. They said, no, we will continue. They go out and make more disciples. And afterwards, they returned the way they came, encouraging the churches. Like I said, they went back. They went back to Lystra. They went back to Iconium. They went back to Presidian Antioch. They went back to these places to tell them about the things that God had worked out in the hearts of both the Jews and the Gentiles who came to believe by their preaching. Acts 15, Paul and Barnabas have now settled back at their home church in Syrian Antioch. But some interesting characters came by. Some interesting characters came by in the form of Jewish Jesus followers. So people who were once of the Jewish faith, but then came to believe on Jesus Christ. They came by to visit the church in Antioch. And they began making demands, stating that for one to be saved, they had to be circumcised. It's, 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 it's almost understandable, given the context in which that they framed their understanding about what it meant to be saved. They were Jews. Every Jewish man was to be circumcised. This is something that every Jewish man understood. But now they're imposing it upon the church. Paul and Barnabas, remember, they had been out there. They had gone and preached to the Gentiles. They had gone out and see how God had allowed the Holy Spirit to fall upon them and people were being saved at, the, at their preaching. They vehemently disagreed with this stipulation that for a person to receive salvation wasn't only by Christ, but also by circumcision. Pastor Green, in other words, there was a wind of doctrine that was trying to enter into this church, this newly founded church, and stipulating that there was a way to be saved in conjunction to Jesus Christ. That your works have to qualify you in conjunction to the work of Jesus Christ. But friends, I'm here to tell you today, the gospel message has never changed. It is by Jesus Christ alone that we can be saved. And Jesus Christ is our way to salvation. They're imposing a wind of doctrine, Pastor Green. They're, they're bringing in a wind of doctrine into the church, and now it's caused disputation amongst the saints. Much debate leads to the church in Antioch sending the leaders, go speak with the apostles. Go speak with the apostles in Jerusalem. Pastor Mark, you're teaching about in council. They sent them to go seek the counsel of the leadership of the church, which was still the apostles based in Jerusalem. And much debate happened. Peter spoke on the topic. 
Paul spoke on the topic, Barnabas spoke on the topic, James spoke on the topic, and ultimately they came to the conclusion that the Gentiles do not need to be circumcised. No man needs to be circumcised in the flesh to be saved. It is the circumcision of the heart that comes by faith in Jesus Christ. They sealed the matter with the letter and they sent it with the brethren. And then Silas, remember that name Silas, and another man by the name of Judas Barsabas, they went back with Paul and Barnabas back to the church in Antioch and they delivered the letter. Now, you're probably wondering, why did I give you all this information? la di da di da Well, at one, I wanted you to know. But also number two, the context matters because before we get to Timothy, we need to know what happened to Paul and Barnabas. So, somebody say follow. Have you ever had a fallout with a friend before? A lot of times? Do you still, are they still, do you still have them as friends, Brother Lawrence? <laughs> Sometimes. Fallouts can be difficult. Right? Especially when it's with a friend. A friend you've held very closely for many years. We see, and I'm glad the Bible makes this very clear. Paul and Barnabas had a follow, but why did they have a follow? Do we know? What about John Mark? Okay, well, let's slow down. Let's slow down, because I don't want all the tea up front. I just want to break it down. Okay, so John Mark, it was about him, but why was that important? Remember, we talked about this in the previous lesson, or I, pre I gave you some insight, but I didn't tell you exactly why. Why did they have a follow? I heard, I heard teacher Lawrence say, well, he didn't want John Mark to go with him, but why? Pardon? He left them, yes. Anything else? The Bible doesn't actually tell us why uh, John Mark left them. Some suppose maybe the, the intensity of the persecution just led him to, you know, grow weary. Or some suppose that maybe because Paul's health was in jeopardy at times. There's many different reasons that could be supposed. But the point is, there was a fallout because Barnabas was adamant that they should take John Mark with them on this next journey, and Paul was like, no, he left us. Remember, the two of them were going together on the mission trip. John Mark even came with them at one point. He, just, he left them, or in Paul's eyes, deserted us, and now you want to bring him with us again? Hardship, difficulty. The follow was so sharp, the Bible says, that Barnabas and Paul actually parted ways. Talk about difficulty. Because you can imagine for Paul, he's been traveling, Barnabas has been his guy since the beginning. Because remember, when nobody believed that Saul was converted, Barnabas was the one who brought Saul to the apostles and said, no, this man is truly a, a, a convert, he's truly followed Christ. It was, it was Saul and Barnabas. Or actually, let me be specific to what the scripture says. The scripture says Barnabas and Saul. So I want us to understand, before we can get into Acts 16 to talk about Paul's, secondary, uh, Paul's second missionary trip, you have to understand, this, is this has just been uh, precipitated on the fact that there's been a follow-up between Barnabas and Saul, Barnabas and Paul, so sharply that they, that they actually depart from one another. We don't hear about Barnabas ever again after this. Barnabas took Mark to the island of Cyprus, and Paul takes Silas. And from this point onwards, we hear about Paul and Silas. Even in ministry, there can be follows. Even in ministry, there can be times when we don't agree. We may not see things eye to eye. But that doesn't mean that Barnabas 
wasn't a Christian. It doesn't mean that Barnabas didn't have the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, I probably think Paul was probably the one who was really intense in this conversation. Because you know why? Later on, Paul ends up commending John Mark. Isn't that interesting? The man that he ended up mashing up his friendship with Barnabas about, he ends up commending him later on. So isn't it funny sometimes how life plays out? You're in the moment, you're hot, everything's, you're upset, whatever. And then later on, years down the road, you're just like, you know what, we had some good times. Maybe I wasn't in the right frame of mind. Who knows? Who knows? But anyways, Acts chapter 16, verse 1 to 5. Acts chapter 16, verse 1 to 5. Let's read it. It should also be on the screen for those of you in the building. Acts chapter 16, verse 1 to 5. When you have it, please say amen. It says in verse 1, Then he came to Derbe and Lystra, two places that we just heard about earlier. And it says, And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, or Timothy in English, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed, but, 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 his father was a Greek. So in other words, Timothy's mom was Jewish, but his father was a Gentile. Verse 2, it says, which was well reported, being Timothy, was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Verse 3, it says, him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew that Timothy's Timothy's father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. I'll end at verse 5. And it says, And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Some interesting things to note if you're taking notes. Paul is now with Silas, and now he's arrived back in Derby. Remember, he's been here before under a different set of circumstances, but now he's traveling with Silas, and they're having great success. On, and they were having great success, sorry, my apologies, on their first missionary journey and in, in Lystra, um, where they were being um, honored as Greek gods. But now, Paul is, must have had a desire to want to go back and see how the work was going in these areas. Now that he's on his second trip, and now he's with Silas, and he comes across a man by the name of Timothy. Timothy. Timothy is spoken well of by the brethren, as it was read, but Timothy has a situation that Paul wants to get ahead of which is, he's uncircumcised. And I suppose this is also because of his family dynamic where his mother was Jewish, but his father was Greek. So there was probably, um, there was probably certain adherences to the Jewish customs that his father probably didn't take because he, that wasn't his custom, that was his mother's. So Paul recognizing, or let me ask you, why do you think that's probably, in, why do you think that's probably important? Why, why would it have mattered if Timothy was circumcised or not? Like, why would Paul have cared about that? Okay, that's interesting. The people wouldn't, which people? Why is that also important? That's a, thank you, Tricia. That's a really good answer. Okay. But where was Paul going? Where would Paul normally go? Where would he normally go when he's going to these places? To the synagogues. Who goes to the synagogues? The Jews. So you can imagine, the brethren are commending Timothy. Paul recognizes Timothy is good for the work. I'm going to bring him with me. He's not circumcised. This could be a problem. This could be a problem. But remember, I just gave you the context where they just went up to Jerusalem, had a big old meeting with Peter, James, and John. Sorry, Peter, James, and the brethren. And they had a discussion saying circumcision is not important. So why is Paul now circumcising Timothy? I thought they just had this big old debate that I just gave you the context about. I heard some answers. I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't hear it. There was a whole bunch of answers at one time. 
Why would, like, why does, like, it almost seems contradictory, doesn't it? Well, it's obviously not contradictory, but it seems that way. But why do you think, why do you think this is important for Paul to want to get ahead of this? Ah, there we go. He wants to get ahead of this because he doesn't want the word of God to be hindered on the basis of circumcision. What does this tell you? Sometimes the minister will do what is necessary for the purpose of the word going forth, even though the people may not necessarily understand its significance, but I'm going to do what's necessary because I want the word of God to go forward. It may not, like I said, we're in this, this whole, since I started doing this latter half of the teaching, I kind of put that theme in the beginning of lesson eight, which is God has interesting ways of bringing about his plans. It doesn't always look like it makes sense. It doesn't always seem like what's right, but God knows what's best. And he gave Paul enough discernment and wisdom to be like, you know what? Let's get ahead of this. Let's get him circumcised because he's good for the work. He's commended. I just had a fallout with somebody who was good for the work. But as somebody new, God has provided me. We see that he took Timothy not for the purposes of salvation, but rather to show that Timothy is not a renegade. He's not rogue. He's good for the work. He's here to do the work of the Lord. And he wants to maintain that relationship or connection with the Jewish audience. You know, the problem in church today, a lot of us go rogue on God. We kind of segregate ourselves to what we think God wants me to do. So I don't associate with certain people anymore. I can't reach certain people anymore. I'm totally unrelatable at work. I'm totally unrelatable to young people. I'm totally unrelatable to old people. I'm just in my little island to myself. And guess what? You get stuck in church. And dare somebody tell you, hey, let's go on the street corner and proclaim Jesus. Whoa, I don't. It's not, it's not the Sabbath. Oh, and let's say we do it on the Sabbath. I can't do that. I'm, I have to go to church. You're not good for the work. Do you see what I'm saying, saints? God wants you to be good for the work. Before your labels, before the titles, he wants you to be good for the work. And I want us to see that Paul is being intentional here. He's discerning in the spirit that there's an opportunity for us to lose connection to lose connection to God's plan. Because God wants the Jewish people to come to know Jesus is their Messiah. So I'm going to let circumcision get in the way? Let's just get it out of the way then. Because I want the word of God to go forward without hindrance. So Paul does this. They get Timothy circumcised. And they continue to preach in the synagogue so that um, they wouldn't lose that connection. But... What I'm saying here is before we get to Paul being dispatched to Macedonia, it's important for us to see that even though Paul and Barnabas had a follow, there was Silas and Timothy in the wings. So I want to encourage every Christian leader, even though there's going to be times where you might have difficulty and hardship with fellow brethren, nobody's irreplaceable. God can send somebody else to come and strengthen you and lift you up. The ministry doesn't hinge on me, it doesn't hinge on Pastor Green, it hinges on God. And he provided people so that Paul wouldn't have to do this alone. So, now we go to Macedonia. Uh, Acts chapter uh, 16, verse 6 to 10. Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to 10. And I apologize if you, if you did have questions. Um, I haven't been watching the chat, but they will get filtered to me, but... Um, please also feel free if you have any thoughts or comments. Verse 6, it says, Now when they had gone through uh, Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after which they came to Mysia and they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Holy Spirit told them no. And they, passing by Mysia, came to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night, we're in verse 9. It says, and there stood a man of Macedonia praying, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he, Paul had seen this vision, immediately they endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called them to preach the gospel unto the people there. I'll move quickly, but some interesting things to note. 
The Holy Spirit gave Paul very specific instruction not to go somewhere. But remember, Paul is very zealous. He's a very zealous individual. And he wants to preach the word of God. And there was, a, there was places he wanted to go, preach the word of God, and the Holy Spirit's telling him no. And that's very interesting to me, because he wants to do the work. But the Holy Spirit has another plan. How many of us have ever been in a time when you want to go do something, maybe buy a house, maybe get a new job, get married, do all this stuff, and God's not yet? And sometimes in the moment, you're like, why is nothing working? Why can't I go forward? I think I have enough money. I think I found the right person. This job is probably going to work out better for me. It's closer to home, pays me a little bit more money. Like, why is nothing working? Has God forgotten about, that's, our always, that's always our response, God must have forgotten about me. It's never just, maybe God wants to do something, but it's just not the right time. And that's what's happening here. It's not the right time, Paul. I want you to go somewhere because if I don't tell you, to, if I don't start providing hindrances that would prevent you, you would go do your own thing. But I'm the one directing this show. So the Holy Spirit tells them to go forward. And then they end up in Troas. Paul gets this vision to go to Macedonia. And the Bible says immediately, immediately, they got up and they went to Macedonia. A comment that I want to make mention of, Paul didn't hesitate once he got the word. Once he got the word from God, he went forward to go do what God told him to do. Once again, Paul had his plans. Paul wanted to go to the places he wanted to go. And the Holy Spirit's telling him, no, here's where I want you to go. And Paul's like, yes, Lord, I will do what you say. Not like, well, why didn't you let me go here? Or why, like, why, why, why? Go do what I told you to do. And he went and did it. Why? Because Macedonia needed to hear the word of God. My teacher, go ahead, sir. Good morning, Sabbath School. I just wanted to dial back a little bit on about disagreement. Yes, sir. Uh, obviously, um, between brethren. And uh, I just want to point out a scripture here. Um, Philippians chapter 4. And um, Paul was speaking to, uh, I believe they're females based on their names. Um, yes. And it says, um, uh, Philippians chapter 4, I read verse 1 and 2, and it says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eudoias and beseech Tintich that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Another version says that you settle your disagreement. Because you belong to the Lord, please settle your disagreement. Why am I saying this? You are headed for the kingdom. I am headed for the kingdom. If we ought to be in the kingdom, we have to settle it right here. We can't go into the kingdom with our disagreement. So let us settle it right here. So it behooves every one of us, if we have a disagreement, whether small or big, whether you, know, you think somebody's wrong or right, let's settle it. As I said before, even if you can't settle, let's go to council. Amen. Thank you, sir. Yeah, well said, well said. And you know, more people would probably benefit from making that a point of culture. More people would probably benefit from seeking counsel when making decisions or settling disagreements. You would actually find this great benefit because at the, at the very least, you will hear another perspective. Sometimes, and, and I know, you know, if you're married, chances are you probably had a disagreement with your spouse, yeah? No, there's, yeah? yeah? Or there's this perfect marriage is at Rexdale. <laughs> there's disagreements that happen, right? Even amongst the person that you're supposed to be closest to. Sometimes, even in your marriage, you need to seek outside counsel. Because when you're hot, and I find this even with myself, sometimes I'm not listening to what Alicia has to tell me. And 99% of the times, Pastor Mark, she's right, and I just don't want to accept it. But 
that is also that 1% chance that I could also be right and she's not hearing what I have to say. Sometimes we have to go out and say, can we get somebody else to hear what we're saying so we can mediate? There's, there's power in counsel. And sometimes what happens is when we don't get counsel, we end up having relationships broken up for no real significant reason. We don't hear about Barnabas again. I, I don't know if Paul and him made it. Like, I don't know. The Bible doesn't say it. it's not. That's not the point. The point is, though, that we should obviously seek counsel when possible. I, I saw a question in the chat um, that says, do you think as scriptures emphasize circumcision that the present brethren should be circumcised now, even if they're old men and mature men, and this never happened when they were born? Remember the significance around circumcision is not, sorry, circumcision that happened was pertaining to the Jewish or the Hebrew man being circumcised as a sign of their allegiance or affiliation to God. There's no spiritual significance of, of circumcision required in the new covenant. So I just, you know, let's just squash that off. There's even perception. You can be circumcised if you want. You cannot be circumcised if you want. God's not judging you for circumcision. Right? Amen? Okay. Um, I think I was making this point earlier, but I just wanted to just close up this section before we get to Lydia at the Riverside. Absolutely. Well, you, you can approach the mic, though. Was you have to about, go closer to the mic, they won't hear you. Okay, a question was asked about, on the chat, about circumcision. Um, I think maybe you should go a little further into it, seeing as it's not somebody here in the audience, and that you give more information why it's not important for us now to be circumcised, and it was important then in the old Jewish days to be circumcised. So could you elaborate a little more deeper on it that everyone can have a good understanding? Thank you. Not at this time, um, but it's something we can look at later. It's, I only have four minutes and I have another section to complete. But it's something that we can definitely discuss at a later time. Um, but I think I've given enough credence for the pro context of this lesson to speak to that, but we can definitely examine that later. Let's go to Acts chapter 16. Um, verse 11 to 15, and then we'll just wrap up quickly. It says in verse 11, Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to uh, Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part in Macedonia and the colony where we were in the city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath, we went by the riverside where prayer was being made, and we sat down, and we spake to the women that were there. And a certain woman by the name of Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, she worshipped God. She heard us preaching. I'm just kind of throwing in some language in between. Her heart was opened by the Lord. She attended to the things which Paul spoke on. She was baptized, all her household. She, in, she urged us to come uh, to her house, and she would not... Let them say no. Some interesting things to know, and then we'll wrap up. As I told to you earlier that normally Paul, when he goes to a place, he would go to the synagogue. But because there probably wasn't enough Jewish men in the city of Philippi, there wasn't a synagogue there, so the brethren were meeting by the riverside. God doesn't need a building for people to worship him. We are blessed to have this wonderful edifice, but God doesn't require this for you to worship him. The brethren were meeting by the riverside for worship and prayer, and on this particular Sabbath, Paul and Silas went to go to the riverside to go find a place to pray, as it was their custom at that time, and they also happened to run up on the women who were there, who were women who obviously had believed in God, Paul preached a sermon, they received the word at the riverside, and immediately we see the response is, here's water, let's get this baptism going. I want us to know that Paul was looking at cities, God was looking at continents. 
Paul was seeing, I'm going to go to Toronto, then I'll go to Branton. God's like, no, 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 Paul. I want you to take Canada. I want you to take Canada. And we're not going to stop at Canada. We're taking all of North America. We're going to South America. We're going everywhere. See, Paul, if he just did what he wanted to do, he would have just went to the local places that he felt like going. But the Holy Spirit was opening doors for him to see, look, I want you to go before kings. I want you to go before leaders without forsaking your responsibility to those people by the riverside who are also waiting to hear the good news. Because remember, Paul has now been in front of politicians. He's now been before Jewish leaders. He's now been before uh, Gentile audiences. He's already proclaimed Jesus in the streets. But now... He's by the riverside with the brethren. So what I'm trying to show you is God's perspective was that Paul would have an inclusive, holistic ministry that wouldn't just find him in certain audiences, but rather, I'm going to send you wherever you need to go. I want to be part of a church that's so desirous of the gospel being preached, it doesn't matter where God's going to send me. I just want to go wherever he wants me to go. So if it's in the river, then it's in the river. It's if it's in the street corner, it's in the street corner. If it's in the physical church building, it's in the physical church. I just want to be where God wants you to be because that's where I'm going to be effective. Um, I'm going to end here, but the only thing I wanted to say to us, and I would, like I said to you in the beginning, I think it's important for us to note there's a lot of other wonderful things that took place later in that chapter. Paul and Silas end up getting imprisoned. Um, but... That was God's doing too, because the Philippian jailer and his household needed to be saved. So sometimes there's going to be Joseph moments where it's like, I don't understand. Why would God let me go to prison for two years for something I ain't do? And most of us would just bail out on God right there and then. But there's a Philippian jailer and his household who needs to be saved. And God will shake heaven and earth to get the job done. So friends, what I'm saying to us today, as I wrap up and close... What's most important for us is not to make sense of the situation. What's most important for us is to trust God. That's like, if you didn't hear anything I said this morning, because I did a lot of talking, if there's nothing you remember, it's trust God. It's not always going to make sense. It doesn't always make sense. There are just some things that just will not make sense to us. We have to accept that. But if we trust God, it doesn't matter. God's going to work it out. And there's a plan and a bigger purpose, even beyond you, beyond your family, beyond your scope of life. There's so many things that God is going to do. And I don't know, 10 years from now, somebody may need to hear this message. I don't know them. I don't know who it is. Maybe it's you in the building. I don't know. All I know is that as long as I remain faithful to the work God has called me to, I just trust him with the results. And that's it. Friends? I'm encouraging us. It doesn't matter if you're in the church building or if you're at the riverside. God has a plan that he's going to work out, and all we need to do is just be part of the process. And there's going to be difficulty, Pastor Green. There's going to be difficulty, hardship, that just, it just comes with the territory. I mean, Paul was, he was in, within a stone, he was being stoned to death. He was being stoned to death, literally being stoned to death, and the man was still faithful. So come on, you can take hardship at work. Yeah, you, can, you, you, you can go through it. You, you can go through hardship at home. You can experience a couple fallouts here and there. Until we get to the point of death, my friends, let's remain faithful. And even if we die, we die with God. Amen? So once again, friends, next week, Pastor Mark will be covering for me, so please keep him in your prayers. But I do uh, plan on returning the week after that. Until then, God bless. Praise the Lord God. Ricardo, I don't even know what to say. I love you so much. I have such admiration for you.
for your knowledge and for your confidence in Christ Jesus. Amen. And I remember one incident, I'll give you this. I went to Mexico. I was in Mexico, all the way in South America. And I'm talking to a brother, and the brother is asking where I came from. I'm like, I came from, come from Toronto. And he goes, do you know a guy by the name of Ricardo? I'm like, of all the places, I'm in Mexico. And this man, his name came up, and I had to send Ricardo a picture. I said, Ricardo, I texted him. I said, do you know this guy? And Ricardo goes, oh my goodness, yeah, I met him in uh, Cancun. Amen. But I was in Mexico City at the time. So this man is not just a person who is speaking. It's a man who actually does and believes. I'm telling you it's the truth. Ricardo is a true missionary. I'm telling you. So I want to thank you for the enablement that God has given you. Uh, at this time, we are going to be transitioning into praise and worship. During the transition, we would like to give our brethren an opportunity to give a tithe and, I'm sorry, an offering. And so what we do, we have four options. Of course, the baskets are here for those who are in-house who prefer this method. Uh, you can just come forward starting now and place your offering in the baskets that are presented. And then there are other, three other options. Um, and so for those who are online, you can see them on your screen. So please utilize those three options um, that are available to you. So the one is an e-transfer, the other one is an online giving, and then of course you can mail in, if you have a, a money order, you can mail that in as well. And so we're gonna conclude our morning service. I feel empowered by this morning's lesson and uh, we're going to be having our closing hymn, hymn number 248, Standing on the Promises. And we're going to be inviting our uh, minister of singing today, Sister Abigail Lawrence, to come and sing this hymn while we follow, after which Sister Trisha Brown will pray the closing prayer. God bless you. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises sing Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of Christ my Savior Standing, standing I am standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of life and fears assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of Christ my Savior standing, standing. I am standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord. Overcoming daily by the Spirit sword Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of Christ my Savior Promises of God. Stand.
standing on the promises I cannot fail Listening every moment to the Spirit's call Resting in my Savior as my all in all Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of Christ my Savior the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are standing on the promises that cannot fail. Hallelujah. Mighty God, we want to honor you. We want to bless you and we want to thank you. What a word this morning, dear Father. Hallelujah. We thank you for our teacher. Oh, mighty God. And as we prayed, Lord, let us hide your words in our heart, almighty God that we will not sin against you, that we will determine every day, every time we hear a word, to do better, to live better, hallelujah, because it is our determination, almighty God, to enter into your kingdom, to make it in, dear Lord, and for you to be proud of us. Father, we are standing on your words today. Mighty God, we thank you for all that was said, all that was done. We invited your presence, and surely, Lord, you were here with us today. We thank you and we honor you, Almighty God. You are worthy of our praise, of our, the, all the glory, of all the honor, dominion and power and majesty belongs only to you, Almighty God. So as we come, dear Lord, as we're closing off this service, Mighty God, we want to thank you for your presence that was here with us. Mighty God, as we enter into a new service, we lift up everything again, Lord, that should be said and done, that it will be all done to give you the glory and the honor due to your name. The singers, dear Lord, that you will blend their voices as one. The musicians, dear Lord, that you'll help them to play skillfully, Lord, because you bless us with many different gifts, dear God. And as they are here giving their gifts back to your service, we're asking, mighty God, that you will bless them in a special way. Everything, dear God, the word, dear Lord, we're just asking that you will take everything into your divine control. And Father, at the end of the day, we will say truly it was good for us to be here. We thank you and we love you for all things and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We praise the Lord God. We praise the Lord God. At this time we are entering into a time of worship. The praise and worship team will take their, their stance on the podium and we are going to worship God in spirit and in truth. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Come on, church. Can we praise the Lord? Come on. Do we serve a worthy God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just so thankful to be in this room this morning. And I'm encouraging all of us today as we worship. Let's just focus on God. Amen. Can we just focus on him? Can we just lift up his holy name? Can, come on, saints. Can we just lift up his holy name? God is so worthy to be praised. The Bible says from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same sun, the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We serve an awesome God. Come on, let's put our hands together. Come on, come on. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. We serve an awesome God. We serve a worthy Savior. You know this song. I know the song. Sing it with me. You're my strength and you are my salvation. I will put my trust in you. My 
heart sings in you my soul rejoices come on church in this song of praise to you say you're my strength you're my strength and you are my salvation you are my I will put my trust. I will put my trust in you. In you and only you, my God. Say my heart sings. My heart sings. You my soul rejoices. In you, my soul rejoices. In this song of praise. In let's sing that one more time. Come on, church. Let's sing it together. Yes, you're my strength. You're my strength. And you are my salvation.
is our God. We thank you, Lord God, for being our strong tower. Thank you, Lord God. We submit ourselves to you now, God. Hallelujah.
wonder if you could indulge me in standing just for another minute maybe another minute could you indulge me for a second could you if the name is above all name if it is true could you worship the Lord God with me if his name is above all name if it is in that name that you found salvation if it is in that name that you found peace if it was that name that you found, hallelujah, joy in the midst of your tribulation, would you worship the Lord God? Shake this house of wood and steel and worship the King, for his name is above all name, and he's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord God, great and mighty God, who sits in decadence, there is no God like you. You are the awesome one. Great and mighty, terrible in judgment. Hallelujah, who is above every name. Hallelujah, and all the earth shall worship the King. For it is declared the heaven is thy throne and the earth is thy footstool. Hallelujah, let all the people praise the Lord. Strong and mighty mighty in battle hallelujah great are you lord hallelujah and worthy to be praised you may be seated if you're able to do so amen thank you lord god amen yes yes we feel him we feel him that's what's supposed to happen when you come into his presence something is supposed to happen when you come into his presence amen for in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy hallelujah amen thank you Lord God if you are joining us for the afternoon service you are tuned into the Church of God Sabbath keeping we are located at 312 Rexdale Boulevard in Toronto Ontario Canada we want to thank our online viewers for joining us but we want to thank the brethren or in-house who have the opportunity to come in the presence of God to worship him. My name is Howard Green. I'll be your moderator for this afternoon's service. I'd like to acknowledge our host pastor, Pastor Maurice Blagrove, and his wife, Carol. I want to thank God for them. I thought this is where you acknowledge 
Amen. There are other ministers that are members of this organization and this church, and we want to acknowledge them all. Amen. Somebody feel the Holy Ghost somewhere. Amen. Whoosh, man. That's a good feeling right there. Hallelujah. And we have the distinguished pleasure this today of receiving Dr. Donville Bell in our midst today. He'll be our speaker. You'll hear from him momentarily. And alongside with him, of course, is his lovely and beautiful wife, Sister Bell. Always fashionable. Amen. We just want to receive you, acknowledge you, Brother Kevin, for coming today. And may the Lord bless you as well. And so we'd like to go straight into this part of the service because we want to give the preacher the opportunity to minister. And so to do, to do so, we're going to be using our opening hymn. It's going to be 274, Pass Me Not. And our minister of song today, uh, Sister Abigail Lawrence, will be ministering in song, after which we'll have the opening prayer by Sister Tricia James. And then we'll have the scripture reading by Sister Shailen Anastasio. Please receive them in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Hallelujah. The songwriter penned, Thou, the spring of all my comfort. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. of all my comfort, Lord, more than life to me. Whom have I on earth beside thee? Hallelujah. Whom in heaven but thee? Almighty God and our Father, another time we approach your mercy seat. We recognize, Lord, that we are nothing without you. Had it not been for your grace, had it not been for your mercy, had it not been for your unfailing love, we couldn't be here to declare your name today. But we thank you that when we were not thinking of you, that you were thinking of us. And that you still consider us in all our faults, with all our messes, in all of our failures. My God. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. Hallelujah. You truly are wonderful, Lord. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise because we have an understanding that you have given us, Almighty God, that there is a God in heaven that watches over us, that continues to keep and provide for us, that does more for us than we can ever ask or think. And with this understanding, Almighty God, we just want to reverence you. We just want to praise you. Come into your courts with understanding. David said, I will sing, and I will sing with the understanding also. Not just to move our lips and sing. Think about what we are singing, hallelujah. Glory be to God on high. As we come before you, dear Lord, this time, we want to place this service before you, dear God. You have already ordained it, so we are just inviting, continuing to invite your presence, dear Lord. Mighty God, we are asking everything that it will be said and done to your honor and to your glory. Dear Lord, we're asking that you'll blend the voices together, that we will sing as one. We pray, Father, that your anointing will be fresh, dear Lord. Truly, Lord, we need to hear from you. We need a word from you. Nothing else will do, Lord. So help our hearts to be open, our minds to be receptive. We pray for the man of God. We pray that you will bless him. We pray that you will unctionize him. We pray that your Holy Spirit will speak through him. Oh, mighty God, as only you can do, because your voice alone makes the difference. When you speak, you relieve the troubled mind. It's the only voice that we hear that makes the difference. Help us to follow, Lord, one day at a time. We leave the service completely into your hands, and we thank you for all that you have done thus far, and we know you'll continue to be with us continue to break chains, continue to make ways, continue to deliver like only you can do as we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Good afternoon, brethren. The scripture reading is taken from Matthew 14, verses 23 to 30. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when the evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. 
And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Amen. Praise the Lord God. May I ask the con congregation, it is customary for us to repeat the Ten Commandments. Uh, here we believe that this is still relevant to the Christian faith. And so I ask you to repeat with me, Exodus chapter 20, 1 through 17. After a brief pause, we'll do James chapter 2 from verse 8 through 12. Let us commence. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. To the word of God we say, Amen. Will you turn to the book of James, chapter 2? Let's read from verse 8 through 12. Let us commence. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. To the word of God we say, Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite Sister Karen White, who will be given an acknowledgement for the Mother's Day. Happy Sabbath, brethren. Happy Sabbath. I'm here this morning to do a reading for Mother's Day. So I'm going to read a poem that goes out to all the mothers, grandmothers, um, aunts, uh, sisters, godmothers, just to all the women who have made an impact in a child's life, whether great or small. The virtuous woman. A virtuous woman is one of a kind. The Bible says she is hard to find. Her price is far above rubies, which are rare. 
She's precious and must be handled with care. Her husband knows she's a cherished gem indeed. She is quick to come to the aid of those who are in need. Her children treat her with honor and respect. They know that she always does her uttermost best. A virtuous woman does all that she can. She's always there and stands by her man. Though she's humble and meek, she takes no mess. And she's highly favored and surely is blessed. You will know her when she passes you by, for she always holds her head up so high. She's courageous and strong. She's undeniably wise. Her faith in God, she will never compromise. A lady of class and elegance too, she will let you know just what you'll need to do to come up to her standard, which is very high, for she is headed to her home in the sky. So to all the virtuous women who hear my voice today, always remember the part that you play. Just be Christ-like, for he is the one who gave us his only begotten son. Happy Mother's Day. I'd like to lend my voice to that beautiful reading and wish all the mothers in this house and mothers-to-be a happy Mother's Day when it comes tomorrow. May the Lord continue to guide and bless. Amen. Before the speaker comes to the podium, it is customary for us to receive your tithe and offering. And so at this time, I want to invite those who are in the audience to come to the baskets, place your tithe and your offering. For those who are remote or those who would prefer other options, there are three other options available to you. You may send an e-transfer. The information is on the screen that is uh, presented. Or you may go to our website and get, do an online giving through the channel. And lastly, you may mail your contributions in through to our address through a money order. I want to acknowledge and thank God for those who have been uh, ardent in giving to our ministry. You have been amazing, and we acknowledge every single giver, no matter how much or how small. Amen. Praise the Lord God. Hallelujah. At this time, we are going to be receiving the man of God momentarily. And so I would just like to give everybody an opportunity to finish giving your offerings, your tithe. And we are indeed blessed today to have the privilege of a notable man of God, a man that I have come to know, love, and acknowledge for what God is doing in his life and what God continues to do in his ministry. Dr. Bell is a very prolific individual, and I've had the opportunity of serving with him during our time at the Word Power Conference. I've had the opportunity for him to host myself and his family, and I can tell you that he's a diligent host and an extremely thoughtful individual. Of course, no man is complete without his wife. And so, Sister Bell, it gives me great pleasure on behalf of our conference to acknowledge you today. Amen. Amen. And it's obvious to all of us of the tremendous contributions you have made both to Dr. Bell and to the ministry as well. Many we will not know, obviously, but being in that position, I know exactly how it works. So thank you so much. We acknowledge you today. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, it is my esteemed privilege to bring to the podium our guest speaker for today, Dr. Don Bell, with his sermon entitled, May Day, May Day. It is customary for us to receive.
To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. This afternoon, I am very much privileged to be in the sanctuary with you, to be among God's wonderful people. Praise God. I'm grateful for the privilege that is extended to me. And I'm glad to know that God is with us. And he continues to provide for all of us. I want to acknowledge those pastors, Pastor Green and Pastor Blagrove. And I want to also Knowledge that is lost of his mother over recent days. My prayers are with you, Pastor Blake Roven family. All the ministers heading various ministries, our wonderful press team, our musicians and our online viewers, members all, and our children. I am very much fascinated by the renovation of your church and the warm welcome that you have extended to myself, my wife, and children. I could not be here at this point if my wife was not by my side. And so I am grateful for you and for your visit with me to, uh, to Canada. And so I want to thank the Lord for all, amen, that he has done. As I'm able once more to look at God's wonderful people. Praise be to God. Praise God. As was mentioned before, the topic I want to speak on today, May Day, May Day, May Day. And the text was already read from Matthew 14, 22 to 30. And so you're, you're well informed on the foundation text I'm going to be using. Let me begin right now. Most of us are Caribbean people. And the popular Calypsonian called Gypsy wrote the song Sinking Ship. And this Calypso classic is a highly political song about Trinidad and Tobago, the sinking ship. He wrote this song on behalf of the National Alliance for the construction of a new party that was running against the people's national movement, which had been in power for 30 years. And so this song deals with a specific country during a specific era of 
politics. But it had, it had endured and found an audience far outside Trinidad and Tobago. As many people viewed their countries as sinking ship with politicians to be blamed. I strike, this song begins with an SOS. Mayday, Mayday. And this was a desperate and deliberate call. The song gives us some important thought. Captain, the ship is sinking. Captain, the seas are rough. Oh yes, the gas tanks are empty. The oil pressure is low. No electricity. Shall we abandon ship? Captain, tell us what to do. You know this definition for May Day is a distress call that is used as a signal to signal a life-threatening emergency. And my question to you this afternoon is do you have a life-threatening situation? And I reach it right, do you have a life-threatening situation? Then what is your mayday language or your distress call? As you look at Matthew 14, 22 to 30, it spoke about the disciples and the raging seas. The Bible spoke about the boisterous winds. Amen. And the disciples were in desperate need of attention. Hallelujah. Being on the sea, and problems occur, then you can only look to somebody who is able to deal with the conditions that are out there. It's not like you can call and just somebody from out there to come and help you. Because these are boisterous winds. These are waves unmatched. Amen to what the ordinary uh, sailors used to. They need, amen, an attention from somewhere. They need an attention from someone. They need, amen, someone who cares and someone who is ready to help. Oh, praise be to God. Can we praise the Lord today? And so therefore it was, amen, about the fourth watch of the night when Jesus Christ, hallelujah, came walking on the water. Here they were troubled, oh hallelujah, and they cried out for fear, Master, save us, help us. Lest we perish. They made that distress call. They made that, made a call. They knew that it's quite unusual. Hallelujah. For this to be happening, amen. 
as though they knew, amen, that they were fishermen. But Jesus Christ came right on time. Oh, praise be to God. Hallelujah. As they cried, Lord, save us. They cried out for fear. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, come. Oh, praise be to God. I believe this afternoon that there are more distresses around us that we can ever talk about. I believe that there are many persons who are bombarded with so many things. The cares of life and the issues, amen, that surrounds us every day. Our social life is impacted. Economic life is contracted. Hallelujah. Contracting. And we know that there are ways and avenues in which we can turn. But this desperate call can only be made to one source. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Because those who believe can help us, they may not be able to do so. But when we raise our hands to God, when we lift a praise to Him, when we shout and make this mayday call, hallelujah, we are calling for help. Hallelujah. When last have you called for help? Are you really afraid to make a loud call to your maker? Have you had any desperate moments before? Hallelujah. I'm saying today we all have our desperate moments. We all have our anxious moments. Hallelujah. But you know what? The God we serve, the God who we look to, who oh, praise God. If you look to a God whom you serve, a God who is much bigger and deeper than your problems, hallelujah, a God who understands, amen, just about everything, then when that call is made, who oh, praise God, be he assured that God will respond. Oh, praise be to God. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are acquainted with the song, Master. The tempest is raging. And the billows are tossing high. Hallelujah. It was not just a man for Trinidad and Tobago in their own situation. It's for us today. Hallelujah. For we are human beings of the highest creation. Oh, praise God. God wants us to understand that we must endure. We must endure. We must come to a point where we are admitting that there's no other help that we know. Oh, praise God. But King Jesus, can you praise God today? Hallelujah. You know, this unthinkable tragedy that you never heard about the Titanic. Come on. This luxury liner, the Titanic. It was built to last. Amen. It came through. It's a product of intense competition among rival ship lines, shipping lines. It was the world's, amen, celebrated ship. Hallelujah. Sailing with many souls 
who were high-ranking officers, wealthy industrialists, uh, dignitaries, amen, uh, celebrities, and the head of the ship builder. He was on board. Hallelujah. Taking the very first maiden voyage. Hallelujah. But you know what? This was an excursion for them. Just a last amen in the memories. But on sea, that ship that was built to last dove beneath the ocean's surface. Hallelujah. And there came a distress call. Hallelujah. And this is called at midnight. May day. May day. We need help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing that humans can do. I will do. That will build to last. Hallelujah. But the salvation that God gives to us, oh praise God, it will last as long as we, as long as we last for God. Oh praise God in him. Oh glory to God. I want us to know that this sophisticated invention Amen. It had exploded in oblivion. Hallelujah. What is it saying to us today? That this reveals to all of us that we remain the subject of human frailties. Amen. And errors, despite our hubris, amen. An understanding in a brief technology technological inf infallibility in fact we believe that technology will last will help us along the way of course it can but Jesus Christ is the only way the truth and life he said no one comes to the Father but by me, oh praise be to God. This distress call was made at a dire moment when 3,000 souls, amen, was about to die. They called for help, but they did not get much help. Hallelujah. If 3,000 souls are here right now and you're calling to your divine God, hallelujah, be well assured that God will respond. Oh, praise be to God. The song reminds us central, never busy. It's always, always on the line. And you can hear from heaven almost any time. It is a royal service. It is free. It is free for one and all. When you get in trouble, give this royal line of call. Can raise hands to God today? Oh, praise be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How a God is listening. The help line is open. Oh, praise be to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just make a call to him. And he'll be there to listen to our hearts cry. Oh, praise be to God. Many persons have cried at night. You have cried day. 
you're burdened down by the pit of pain that you experience. Hallelujah. But our God knows everything. Can we praise him today? Come and praise God. Our God knows everything. For our God is able. Oh, praise God. He is the sustainer. He is the provider. He is the healer. He is the deliverer. He is the all-powerful. He is the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. Listen to me today. Hallelujah. Our God will take a distress call. Amen. Whenever you call. Oh, praise be to God. Praise God. For some of you right now are facing mountains of financial challenges. Hallelujah. You have tried everything. The experts said, Amen, that you have utilized all options. Hallelujah. And some of you are faced right now with physical challenges. Amen. That, amen, the doctors have a problem to solve. Hallelujah. But there is the most, I God. There is the King Jesus. What doctors cannot do, then God, amen, can do it. It is he who hath made us. Hallelujah. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. Come on, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. Come on. He is good. He is good. He is good. His mercy is everlasting. And His truth endures to all generations. Who oh, praise be to God. Hallelujah. Raise a praise to God today. Hallelujah. Make that distress call. Make that call. Make that call. Hallelujah. There are times when you call everybody else. We didn't call God first. We call our doctors first. We call our financier first. We call our friends first. But the time has come. Hallelujah. The one whom we serve is the great I am. Hallelujah. He's our father, our eternal father. Is our help, is our present help. Hallelujah. Come on, praise God. Our present help in time of trouble. Hallelujah. Are you today in deep waters, in your deep waters, covering you all over? He said, No, you won't submerge. Hallelujah. The waters won't cover you. Neither will the fire burn you. Hallelujah. For there is a God. A God. A God. Up there. Who looks down. On all of us. Come on, come on. He's our blessed Savior. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No remedy seemed to be available. No solution seemed to be the final prognosis. Hallelujah. That is a time to make the call. Hallelujah. When you have spent everything when you reach a point of embarrassment, when you know 
You can't make it. You can't do it all by yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you thought that you could have done it all by yourself, then you're wrong. You're wrong. For the God we serve, he is a way maker. Amen. Hallelujah. Make that may they call today. Oh, praise be to God. Before you tell anybody else, said Jesus, Jesus, I'm here. Jesus, I'm hurting. Jesus, I'm pained up all over. Hallelujah. I am coming up on the rough side of the mountain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The God we serve will listen. Will say come. Hallelujah. I'm here to share you. I'm here to give you what you need. Oh praise be to God. Come and praise God today. Make that May Day call the Elf Line. The Elf Line. The Lifeline. Oh, praise be to God. If you didn't know, it's the Elf Line. The Elf Line. And the Lifeline. Oh, praise be to God. If you need help, then call on him. Hallelujah. If you need help, then call on him. If you need life, he said, look, I come to give you life. And that you may have it more abundantly. Oh, praise be to God. Hallelujah. Right now you are in a perfect place to meet with God. Oh, praise God. There's no better place. There's no better opportunity that you can ever get but to be in the sanctuary. Oh, praise God. To say, God, I'm here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then God will say, yes, I'm here too. To meet your needs and to set the captive free. Oh, praise be to God. Whatever final prognosis that was given, ah, said by the doctor, hallelujah, there's a doctor above all doctors. Hallelujah, there's a doctor who's not in training, but who has trained. Hallelujah, there's a doctor, hallelujah, from day one, he knows medicine. From day one, he knows about finances. From day one, he is a caregiver. Come on, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell Jesus, he is, he is a God who well knows. Oh, praise be to God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. You will walk. This God we serve. He will walk in the, in the impossible. And overturn the impossible. Hallelujah. He will walk into it. You say it. He walked into it. Oh, praise God. And overturn the impossible. And suppose folk directly ah, to the troubled sailors. He spoke directly to the centurion. Hallelujah. He said, look, I know we have troubles. But I have been there before. Oh, praise God. I'm going to give you a word. Accept you. Abide in the ship. Hallelujah. You will not be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And that's why the, the song read right upon the song, Master, the tempest is raging. Hallelujah. I want you to know right now that in the near far east, the seas represented, hallelujah, chaotic forces controllable only by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No other force. Nothing else. No human understanding or knowledge ah, can bring calm to a raging sea. Hallelujah. But God who made the heavens, God who made the earth, he said, let there be light. And there was light. He said, let there be waters upon the earth. And the waters came. Hallelujah. And so Paul quoted Genesis chapter 1 and the verse 2. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Genesis spoke about this chaotic mass. This formless state. Hallelujah. But you know what? God spoke to this chaotic mass. God spoke to this formlessness and said, let there be light. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there was light. Hallelujah. And that's why Paul said, look, the God in the Genesis is the same God today. Hallelujah. Make that distress call to the same God. Make your mayday call to the same God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will do something about it. Come and praise God. Hallelujah. Paul said, look, this chaotic mass ex existed before. Hallelujah. I've now come to know that God is an all purpose God. Hallelujah. He had done it in the beginning. He's about to do it today. Hallelujah. I give your word. Except you abide in the ship, your life will not be saved. Hallelujah. What are you doing right now? As your ship is tossing in the waters, amen, covering the ship. How the men on board, they cut the ropes off the boat. They let them fall. They throw men and, uh, and wares overboard. What are you about to do right now? Hallelujah. Yes, you need to cut loose so many things. God is saying cut loose, amen, from the things that bind you. The things that hold you down. You are so cloaked up in the web of materialism. Hallelujah. Except we drop, we cut and drop. Then, amen, we won't be spared. Come on. But make that call today. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They call while they were in distress. Sometimes you look for life's rafts and vests. Hallelujah. Amen. To devise a method. Amen. If we cut them, we bring them back. Hallelujah. Yes, we have so many people today who are skillful. Hallelujah. Ah, in bringing up the things that God had already put on the bottomless part of the sea. Amen. He said, look, I am God. If I forgive you, your sins will not stay here, but it will go there. Hallelujah. At the bottomless part 
of the sea. And you know what? I will remember them no more. Come on. But we have, amen, some individuals today who are skilled uh, by placing on themselves a, a life rafts and vest who are good divers. Yes, Pastor Green. If though God said, look, I will remember them no more. Hallelujah. These divers. We have some divers in church today. Always remembering. Always saying sometime last year, sometime the year before, it was the same time that you prayed to God. And God said, look, I forgive and I forget. Hallelujah. But there are persons among us everywhere. Hallelujah. Who will just dive it up and bring it to your face. Hallelujah. But the God we serve is saying, Hallelujah. If I have done it, then nobody else can undo it. Hallelujah. If I forgive, hallelujah, then we ought to also forgive. Oh, praise God. A big problem we are faced with today. Hallelujah. And why this distress call sometimes becomes irrelevant is because we fail ah, to tap into the problem, the situation that perplexes us and so God, I give it to you. I give it to you. Like the songwriter, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence daily live, I surrender all. Oh, praise God. You can't make that call in an impactful way. You can't make that call, hallelujah, with any kind of spiritual energy. You can't make that call without any kind of commitment unless, amen, you do as God would want you to do. I surrender all. Oh, hallelujah. 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 How much today what have made you become so fearful? As the disciples were fearful, Paul said, look, I've been there. I know how to, who to call to, the God that I serve. Amen. But how much is fair? This is something that grips us today. A fair to make the call. A fear that keeps us down. We must elevate ourselves from fear. Hallelujah. How much fear is much fear. Oh, hallelujah. No matter where you turn. Amen. You see much fear. Hallelujah. But it's time to give it to God. Your time, hallelujah, God is saying your time for fair is over. And your life is now in God's hands. Oh, praise God. Paul wrote, whose hands was in the hands of the master. He said to the disciples, be of good share Paul had been there before. Oh, praise be to God. Praise God. He knew that God would have brought him out. He knew that God would have brought him through. Oh, praise God. And that's the God we serve today. As we look around today, there are much, amen, these, the words of God must build 
this spiritual pressure within us, the words of God must respond in time of crisis. Hallelujah. And that's why David said, look, I heat up the word. Praise God. And this word became my necessary food. And I eat it. Come on night and day. Oh, praise be to God. Praise God. And night and day. So therefore, there must be some hoarded words. Hoarded word of God. Within us, that will just respond to our circumstances in time of trials, in time of deep circumstances, in time of need. Have you ordered the word within you? Have you bottled up the word? Have you canned it? Hallelujah. Have you read it? Then you should respond in a positive way. Hallelujah. When your troubles come, praise be to God. I'm saying to us today, like Psalm 23, amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fare no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, praise be to God. Praise God. Be of good share when it seems as if things, amen, is running against you. Be of good share when you, when you, when you get to a point, amen, when that situation wants to get rid of you. Be of good share when you look, amen, at your loved ones going down there. Be of good share, hallelujah, when you look from your ship, come on, and you see all the waters of affliction. The waters, amen, amen, of malice. The waters of pride and variances. The waters of destruction, even being covered by the winds and the rays. Hallelujah. The God we serve, he is well able. Well able to destroy anything that comes against you. Oh, praise be to God. Praise God. But I'm consoled right now with Esther's vision. Her tenacity. Esther's, amen, uh, all thinking. At the very moment, the spirit of Esther, oh praise God, the spirit of resilience. Hallelujah. There was something that was stacked up against the Jews. Amen. Has anything been stocked up against you at any point in time where you think that there's no way out? Well, for Esther, for the Jews, for Mordecai, there, were, there weren't any way out. Hallelujah. For the king, amen, will soon to sign that order. Oh, hallelujah. But Mordecai, Mordecai got wind. She said, she said, he said, Esther, you are at a good place. Oh, praise God. A good place to save the nation. A good place to save the Jews. A good place to save yourself. 
Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, look, within a couple of days, if we do not do something about it, then all of us will die. The Jewish nation will be extinct. Hallelujah. But think not that you who stayed and live beside the king, you are a Jew. Hallelujah. And your life will not be spared either. Do something about it. Oh, hallelujah. And so, she said, look, as God live it, although God was not mentioned in the book of Esther, she was a Jew. Hallelujah. She knew that God, there's a God somewhere yes, who listens. She knew that some time ago, though she was an orphan, amen, before, amen, she became an orphan. Hallelujah. She knew and heard about a deliverer, a God, amen, who can deliver, deliver nations, deliver the children of Israel. Hallelujah. God had responded in time of need. And so she said, look, let's go on some fasting. Come on, church. Hallelujah. That is an important decision to make. Hey, man, long before you make this distress call, before you make that mayday call, Hallelujah. Make some sacrifice. Hallelujah. Make some sacrifice. Answer God. I won't go under, but I will go up. Oh, praise God. I won't go under, but I am seeking deliverance. Oh, praise be to God. Hallelujah. She said, look, man and beast, everybody. Let's make it, amen, and make the mayday call. Oh, praise be to God. Everybody went on fasting uh, over the period of time and said, look, at the end of it, I am going to the king. Hallelujah. Although he didn't call me. Although, amen, he didn't hand out the scepter. This is an urgent call. This is a mayday call. This is a distress call. I am getting up from where I am. Hallelujah. I am going to see the king. Hallelujah. And if I perish, if I perish, I perish. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, that call was made not to, an, an, not to an unknown God, but a God who was present, a God who was right there, a God who prepared her for the future, a God she knew about. Oh, praise God. It was not the king's God, but it was her God. Hallelujah. Where is your God today? How oh, are you responding in time of danger, in time of need? What is your response call? How oh, do you make that distress call? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Esther said, I'm going to get up from where I am seated. I'm going to go out there whether I'm called, yes or no, I'm going to make that call to the king. Hallelujah. Whether I die or I live, I'm going to make that call. And if I perish, I perish. Come on, church. Oh, hallelujah. That was a made a call. I will go to the king, which is against the law. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Esther's fear, amen, was turned to faith. Hallelujah. Her fear was turned 
to faith. Amen. I should now, amen, expect God to do something about it. She had a divine, amen, call. She knew that God was somewhere. Hallelujah. She knew that there was a divine somewhere, standing somewhere. That's what the song says. In the shadows, you'll find Jesus. You don't have to search around. Hallelujah. Or look too far. All you're going to do is to look up. Look up to God. Hallelujah. Who is always there. Is always in the heavens of heavens. His supernatural powers are always around us. You don't have to dig to find him. Amen. I walk very far to find him. He's right there beside you. Oh, praise be to God. Praise God. You don't have to go very far, Pastor Green. For he's always near. Hallelujah. And he is a present help in time of trouble. Oh, praise be to God. Hallelujah. Esther's fear turned into faith. Amen. As she accepted God's divine purpose. Oh, praise be to God. Hallelujah. It's important, therefore, that deep very deep in the recesses of our mind we should amen not just contemplate we should go forward amen and look to God look to him in a positive way look to him for new vision look to him for new life look to him for hope look to him for happiness Hallelujah. Look to him. Ah, to give you peace in the storm. Oh, praise God. There is peace in the storm. I'm going to ask the press team to just come forward and help me with this song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me with this song. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Master, the tempest is raging and the billows are tossing high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Esther said, look, if I perish, I perish. Where are you right now? How deep, amen, are you in God? What are the situations that is separating you from your God? What are the challenges that you're faced with, amen, so deep that you can't, that you can't make that distress call? Hallelujah. God is at your fingers tip. As you make that call today, Hallelujah. God will not see you go under. But God will lift you up. Praise God. The song says, He will lift you up. Lord, lift me up. And let me stand. By faith in heaven's stable land. Oh, how you're playing but I found. Lord, plant my feet. At higher ground. Make that courage right now. Hallelujah. To make the call. The helpline is open. Oh praise God. Jesus Christ is there. To listen. To your heart's cry. Oh hallelujah. And so. Esther made. That the pivotal moment of a trusting submission hallelujah to the very will of God hallelujah 
or trusting submission to the very will of God. Praise God. Where is your will? Don't allow your will to supersede the will of God. Hallelujah. But allow your will to be lost. Hallelujah. In his will. Oh, praise God. And continue to do the wishes of God. Estimate the pivotal moment of trusting submission to the will of God. Er surrendered. Amen. Resonates and resonates in these words. Amen. Expressed by the Apostle Paul. Oh, hallelujah. I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and to complete the task of testifying about Jesus Christ, about the good news of salvation, about the grace of God. Oh, praise be to God. Hope, thou in Jesus, for Jesus Christ comes to give you hope. I'd like to sing this song, amen, as I close the sermon. And I want you to do so with all sincerity. Do so from the very pit, from the depth of your heart. Do so as you make that mayday call. Make that distress call for today can be your day. Master, the tempest is raging. The pillars are tossing out. The sky is so shadowed with blackness. No shelter or help is now. Okay, rest the not. Let's repair. How canst thou lie asleep? Oh, when each moment so well is threatening, a grave in the angry deep. Yes, the wind and the wave shall obey. Oh, peace, 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 yeah, weather. 
There's Thank hope you, in Lord King God. Jesus. There's hope in the Lord. Has estimated that distress call. Estimate this at this very at the very pivotal moment of our trusting submission to God. Hallelujah. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we will remember the name of our God. I believe that there are some persons right now within the radius of my voice. You are a man going under. But I want to allow you to know that the time is right for the king is heir, praise God, to meet your needs and to give you a new lease to life. Oh, praise God. Don't allow your problems to allow to submerge or to give up. But if you take a step right here today and say, God, God, today, I'd like a man this purging. Today, I'd like my faith to be lifted up. Today, I'm making that distress call, this mayday call, hallelujah to you. Then you will see life taking on, amen, a new measure. For God is about changing life that is going in a different direction. Hallelujah from his direction. As we make the final refrain, I'm inviting us to come those who are depressed and distressed. Hallelujah. Depression knows no friend. Neither does depression knows no friend. Hallelujah. But you are a friend in Jesus. Amen. Who is able to deal with that depression and that distress. Make that distress call today. Our final stanza. Master, the terror is over. The elements sweetly rest. Hallelujah. Earth, sun in the complex is mirrored, and heavens within my breath. Peace be still. Peace be still. They all 
shall they all shall sweetly obey I will peace be still peace peace be still please stand up upon us we pray our closing prayer hallelujah a gracious God and the father of us all the anointed head the God who knows everything the God of heavens and the earth and the seas that responded to you you command everything to stand still and they stood we can right now father in the name of Jesus Christ after we've listened to your word and those amen individuals who had made that distress call hallelujah because they were in turmoil they were in high seas and high waters but they knew that you could deliver they knew that you are the incomparable Christ, hallelujah, who is able to, amen, make things happen, make something today happen to those who are out there right now. We don't know, Lord, hallelujah, watch on their thoughts, on their mind. We don't know, Lord, the deepening hurt. And this is the situation that they're faced with. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they come boldly to the throne of grace. They now sit and stand in your, kneel in the presence. Oh, praise God. For in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, touch the earth. This is a disappointment, the disillusionment. Hallelujah. Grant favor right now to your sons and daughters. Hallelujah. For as long as you live, there'll be a tomorrow. And you can help them to face their tomorrow. Hallelujah, without being discouraged. You can help them to face their tomorrow without wondering whether or not, hallelujah, I can stand, hallelujah, and face my tomorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ, as they make this distress call, this mayday call, in the name of Jesus Christ, help somebody right now. The others who, amen, are, who didn't come up. But I know, Lord, that they are making a summary of their life. As they are making a call to you right now. Hallelujah. I'm glad, Lord, that you said that you will listen. Praise God. I'm glad, Lord, that you said that you respond. I'm glad that others are invested in you. Hallelujah. So that they can declare the truth of God. Hallelujah. To your people today. Lord, trust is important right now. And we trust you for the saving of our soul. In the name of Jesus Christ, lay your hand, amen, on somebody right now that's going through the hard times, going through their physical state. I pray for relief. I pray for courage. I pray for strength. I pray that the Spirit of God will engulf them, hallelujah, and make their tomorrow a brighter one. Thank you, Lord, right now. Thank you right now for this warm embrace. Thank you right now. Hallelujah. 
for the privilege of coming to you as you listen to the cry of your children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, pray. Amen. Oh, praise God. We praise the Lord God. My, my, my thoughts are saying that you didn't, get, you didn't get what he was saying. Can we praise God? If you got what he was saying, you're going to live and not die. You're not going to drown because we have made the mayday call. And our master is the captain of heaven and earth. Amen. Dr. Bell, on behalf of our host pastor, Pastor Maurice Blagrove, and all the ministers of this congregation, including our brethren, and our guests that are online and our partners, I would like to express our thanks to you and your lovely wife for being here today and ministering to us in this congregation and those online. I think we should stand on our feet and acknowledge the man of God. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you again, Dr. Bell. And as always, you have always been a tremendous blessing when you do come. And you have never failed, never disappointed. So thank you so much. And when you do return to Jamaica, of course, give our love to all the saints, uh, Pastor Harley, the ministerial body, and all the brethren at Willowdale. Willow Dean, right? Willow Dean. All right, good. God bless you. Um, I want to thank our online guests for joining us today. Well, thank you for your patronage. And for those who have been active participants uh, with us for the past few years, we want to acknowledge and thank God for you and for all your contributions that you continue to make. We trust that today's service has been a blessing to you. God bless you. Please stay tuned for some announcement, announcements that will be on the uh, screen. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you next week, same time. Amen.